Welcome, everyone, to our webcast. Uh, we're going to talk about the Informix Warehouse Accelerator and actually uh, do a live demo of it. And with me, I have Mike Walker and Art Kegel, and I am Lester Knudsen from Advanced Data Tools. Uh, we've got a lot of people uh, joining still, so I'm, I'm going to take a few minutes just to go slowly and introduce uh, things, and then we'll go get started. Uh, I'm kind of excited about this. We had over 100 people registered uh, yesterday, and I don't know what the final count is. So I'm Lester Knutson. I've been uh, building databases in Formix since 1983, and um, I've been really uh, excited uh, to be part of uh, the program working with the Informix Warehouse Accelerator. With us, uh, we have Mike Walker, who's one of our senior database consultants. Uh, he's been working with Informix for 18 years. Mike is uh, from England, and um, he's going to do the bulk of the demo of uh, this. I decided it was time to have someone else uh, do some of the presentation here. And uh, to help us with Q&A at the end, Art Kegel, one of our senior principal database consultants, uh, is also going to be on the call to take your questions. So just a little bit about what we're going to cover. And, and this is going to be tricky. We're going to do a live demo. Um, and demos, I always uh, worry about how well technology is going to work when you actually want to show it. Uh, but we're going to demo uh, the Informix Warehouse Accelerator. Mike is going to show you how to set it up and a little bit about how the accelerator works. I'm going to show you how you can use a out-of-the-box uh, ODBC query tool uh, to query the accelerator uh, from scratch. And then at the very end, Mike's going to show you a bit about uh, SmartMart and uh, how you can use this to automatically create a data mark, uh, which is part of the accelerator. Uh, so this is going to be an exciting uh, technology. We do have some slides that we'll go through, and uh, we also have uh, some screens we'll show you. Uh, so you'll get to see a bit of both. Uh, this is not a a, um, a uh, well, I, I guess the best way to say it is we're going to cover everything about setting up the accelerator in a one-hour webcast. So that probably takes the better part of a day. And uh, there have been several other webcasts going into the technology behind the accelerator. We're going to focus on how it works and how you can use it very quickly to get faster queries. Now, back at uh, the Informix conference in October, I did a presentation where my uh, keynote slide was, uh, I had shocking news. I took nine hours of queries and they ran in 15 minutes. Um, this is in the beta program, and I've spent quite a bit of time working with the Informix Warehouse Accelerator. And I took uh, some clients' real data, and uh, basically part of a two terabyte uh, data warehouse, uh, set it up on the accelerator, optimized Informix, ran the, a set of queries in Informix, they took nine hours. I took that same set of queries and ran them unchanged through the accelerator, and they were done in 15 minutes. And so after that, I was like, you know, we need to get a better benchmark because uh, that was client's data. It's hard to show you client's data. Uh, so we focused on building a demo database uh, that we could use uh, to show you, and that's what we're going to show you today. Um, just a bit of background now before I jump into that. The warehouse, uh, we've been in the beta program for the warehouse accelerator since uh, it first came out. We've used it uh, for quite a bit. We've been building data warehouses with Informix since 1990. 
And um, I think the warehouse accelerator is a really good fit for what you can do with Informix uh, to optimize your warehouse queries. Now this is a machine we're going to show you. Uh, it's that little box there. Uh, it's not a big machine. Uh, I bought it in uh, December. It cost somewhere between fifteen and twenty thousand dollars. It's an IBM uh, X uh, thirty five hundred. It's got two Xeon chips, one hundred and twenty eight gigs of RAM. We're running SUSE. Uh, it's got Informix uh, eleven point seven. FC4, and we're running Accelerator on the same box. Basically, what we've done is we've split the RAM, um, and not really physically split the RAM, but logically we've assigned half the RAM to Informix and half the RAM to the Accelerator. Uh, so that gives us a, a really good uh, benchmark. And my idea with this box is I wanted something that I could take uh, to a customer site and say, let's do a proof of concept and load your data on this box. And uh, let's try uh, the accelerator with your data, your queries, your query tools, and see how it responds. Um, we can do that both uh, at your site and uh, back here at our site. The box is a little bit bigger to ship around uh, than I expected, but it's not much bigger than a desktop machine. As you can see, it fits right under my table. Uh, downstairs. Now, I'm going to turn this over to Mike Walker, who's going to walk you through the database and uh, actually then start showing you some queries. And I challenge Mike to come up with a very realistic sales database. Um, I said it's got to be all data that we can show publicly. Um, and so he's going to tell you about that. So let me find Mike on the list, and I'm going to make Mike the presenter. The problem with so many people uh, joining uh, the webcast, uh, it's hard to find Mike in that list. And so, Mike, are you there now? Hang on just a minute, Mike. I don't think you're unmuted yet. There we go. Thank Hi. you, Lester. I'm you are all set to go then. <laughs> all right. Thanks, Lester. Okay. So as Lester said, um, we have set up uh, an example uh, database here, and it's a data mart, and uh, everything centers around a fact table. And we're trying to simulate a uh, bookstore or a chain of bookstores. And there's 800 stores in this fictional uh, data mart. Um, and we have loaded uh, a billion records into our fact table, as you can see here. Um, so it's, it's pretty sizable. Um, I'll just run through these tables very quickly. So uh, we have a customer dimension table. That guy's got 250 million customers in it. Um, each uh, sale is linked to a customer. Uh, there's uh, a book dimension table, and that guy's got 15 million records in it, and each book has an author. Um, we have 800 stores. Uh, we have a time dimension, so we uh, can show, we can bring in quarter, fiscal year, day of the week, that kind of thing. And lastly, we have a promotion table. That guy's just got 200 records in it. Um, but uh, in, our, in our sales here, we randomly assign a, a promotion to some sales, which is simply like 10% you know, off your, your order. Um, okay, so uh, there's, our, there's our schema. And I want to show you some of the times now. Uh, yes, we're, we're going to be doing a demo in just a second. But um, here's the timings that, that, uh, that we've achieved with uh, 12 example queries that I try to set up to represent you know, real life business questions um, against this data mark. And uh, out of these, these 12, the, the, the column on the left here is the 
the, the time without using the accelerator. Um, as you can see, the first query there, it takes uh, 12 minutes, 12 and a half minutes. Uh, with the accelerator, that guy runs in just eight seconds. So a uh, huge improvement there. Um, and you can go through the times. We'll, we'll revisit these later. Um, but you can see on the whole, uh, the accelerator was much faster. Um, so uh, these 12 queries take just over three hours to run um, against the engine without the accelerator. Those same 12 queries run in under 10 minutes, just over nine minutes uh, with the accelerator. So you can see there's a huge improvement there. And there's, we're not doing any magic here. We're simply just enabling the accelerator and we run those queries again. And uh, I want to go ahead and show you that just very quickly here. So this first screen is the 12 queries run without the accelerator um, using PDQ priority of 100. Uh, a lot of these queries are using hash joins um, because we're retrieving, uh, we're, we're scanning a lot of data here. Um, so, and you see 186 minutes for these queries. I, I've just put all these queries just into one script so I can run it again and again exactly the same way. And then I'm about to kick off uh, that same script, but this time enabling the accelerator. So I'm going to kick it off right now. And uh, so this first query, this guy takes uh, 12 and a half minutes without the accelerator. Oh, and it is already done with running that same query with the accelerator enabled. And um, we can see here for 10 minutes, or I can uh, go ahead and show you a few other things. Uh, while this guy's running, and it's just going to go through all, all 12 here, we can actually uh, take a look at that first query. The second one's done now, 18 seconds. Uh, that guy is just under 10 minutes uh, without the accelerator. Let's go and take a look at um, the SQL that runs for that first test. If you take a look here, this, this guy is really simple. We're just reading from our fact table. Remember, that's got a billion records in it. Um, and we are trying to find out how much uh, money has been made uh, throughout all our data, which is 12 years worth of data, and group it by, by year. So we can see, you know, for 2000, we made X dollars, 2001, and so on. Now, in order to satisfy this query, we've got to read every record in our fact table. There's no summary tables here. This is this has got to go through a billion records in order to return the data. So, um, and that's why it takes, you know, 12 and a half minutes without the accelerator, but with the accelerator enabled, just eight seconds. The only difference, or the only thing to say um, when we submit this query to the engine, uh, to say um, use the accelerator is this first line. If you see this first line, set environment, use DWA one. If we set it to one, we are telling the engine, hey, if you can offload this to the accelerator, have the accelerator do the work, then go ahead and do it. Um, and all of the queries that we see running right now in, in this window on the top right, that, that's the only difference is saying use DWA one. The queries in the left window, they exactly the same queries. They just ran with use DWA zero, which says don't offload anything to the accelerator. There's other values there that we can use um, that say provide debugging information or a uh, value of seven, for example, says uh, force the accelerator to be used. And if that query cannot be satisfied by the accelerator, we get an error. Um, so there's other values there we can use. If we take a look at the explain plan for the same query, we can tell whether it's been sent to the accelerator or not. And taking a look here, this is just the explain plan. Um, instead of the usual stuff we see here, we see this uh, funky thing here. Um, and that is saying, execute it with a remote pass, send it to the accelerator. And the accelerator, when you first set it up and you, you set up your data mart, uh, creates these accelerated query tables, which are simply uh, views um, on, your, on your database. And that's how it, it, uh, the engine will use those views to pass data to the accelerator. 
And we look through here and we can see this is the, the query that was actually sent. Um, so our original query was turned into this, uh, this other thing and passed the accelerator. We're doing a scan on the table, or we would. Um, and in the query statistics, we see the word remote. And that means the accelerator did this query. Okay. Um, so as we look back here at our, at our queries, we see already we're, we're down to number eight. Um, and a, we can see right now that there's quite an improvement. Okay, going back to the presentation, I want to, I want to just, uh, oops. Yeah. Now, I, I've, um, this uh, presentation will be available after the, after the, the webcast here. Um, and uh, so a lot of this stuff has been duplicated. And here's that first example query with the set environment, which is the only difference between the accelerated and non-accelerated versions. Here's the explain plan that we just took a look at. So these are the, the queries. And here uh, I'm showing you the, the, the business question I was trying to answer uh, against this data mark. The first query, we're just trying to see the total sales by dollar amount over each year. The second test was showing us uh, which days had the highest revenue over these last 10 years. So you can see what are your peak periods. You know, are they around Christmas? you know, or, or uh, New Year, when, are they around holidays or what? Um, and then remember, this is a, we're trying to represent a bookstore here. So what are our test 10 best-selling books or products within a, within a one-week period? You might want to find out, you know, what's selling well um, currently. And then uh, test four looks at uh, what are our top 10 customers by how much money they've spent. Uh, and I just restricted it to four different states. Um, so, you know, who, who are your big spenders? Uh, test number five um, looks at a specified author. It's actually Tom Clancy um, in, our, in our books table. As how many books were sold um, by period, so over time, um, and over geographical area? So, uh, you know, where were these books sold? Were they, they sold on the West Coast, the East Coast, wherever? Uh, test number six, use our promotions table to, to find out which promotions have been most successful and how much have they cost. Uh, because we're giving discounts on these sales, how much, how much money have we, uh, have we actually saved the customer, or in our case, you know, what was the cost of that promotion? Um, test number seven, let's look at the number of books sold by the day of the week over a three-year period. Uh, you know, what's, what is our busiest day? Is it, well, it actually works out to be Saturday followed by Sunday in, in our uh, demo here. Um, test number eight, uh, let's look at uh, the number of books sold to customers who live at stores um, that live in the same state as the stores versus those who live out, out of state. Uh, test nine, um, let's look at each of our stores over a 12-year period um, and we, we, we set up uh, stores with different uh, square footage and all the same size, and we sh we'd expect to see more sales at the larger store. So let's break it down to uh, the, the income per square foot and see what our most profitable and least profitable stores might be. Uh, questions are test 10 and 11. These are, these are some interesting ones. So here we're trying to look at uh, number 10, look at a particular customer and find out what their purchase history, what have they, they bought. Um, and this one, we go in through the customer table and we look up the customer by unique identifier. Um, and that's an index field in, in our, our demonstration uh, database here. Um, and that guy, as you'd expect, is pretty quick without the accelerator. The guy, that, that uh, query uses every table that we've set up and every join is indexed and the first select on the customer table that too is indexed, so it's it's very quick, and we'll we'll look at the timings again in a second. Um, test number eleven is exactly the same query, but this time we're going in by um, by the customer name. Um, that guy is not indexed, uh, and we'll we'll take a look in a second at the performance, so the relative performance between test ten and eleven. The last test uh, just shows a breakdown of all our sales by store 
by period. This one returns a few more records, well, a lot more records, um, but this is the sort of thing you might want to bring in, bring into a BI tool and, and graph and, and uh, split it out by store. You could use this in a summary table that would be part of your a nightly run, or, for example. Um, anyway, those are our queries. And uh, let's just take a look back and see how our, our tests are running. And uh, right now we're on the last test, test 12. So um, that guy is, is still going, uh, but we're, we should be almost wrapping up now. Let's take a look at these two things. And uh, I wanted to show you uh, the difference between test 10 and test 11. Oh, there we go, we finished. Nine minutes, uh, five seconds, let's call it. So quite an improvement over 186 minutes or three hours. Um, so back to test 10 and 11. Uh, test 10 was the query that, uh, that uh, was completely indexed. I'm going to go back to presentation here so we can... You can see these timings here a little clearer. So test 10 was the, the hit all of our tables using index joins. The first query hit the customer table using an index. Without the accelerator, it ran in one second. Um, that's what we'd expect to see. I mean, everything's indexed, ran really well. Uh, with the accelerator, this guy ran much slower. It ran in 55 seconds, almost a minute. Um, and again, that's what we'd expect. If your queries are all indexed, um, you'd expect to see, and you're returning few records, I mean, just a few, I and mean, this guy is not returning many records at all, um, then you would expect to see the query in just in Formix without the accelerator run well. Um, with the accelerator, I mean, it's good and everything, but it's really, it's going to help you more when you're, scanning a lot of data. If we look at, uh, we contrast that with the next test, test 11, remember this is the same query, but when, when unable to use an index on the last name, first name, which is what, um, which was what we're doing here. Um, so in order to satisfy this query using the engine, we have to do a scan of our customer table. That's 250 million records, and they're very wide. I mean, they've got you know, name and address in them. So they're, they're pretty wide tables. And uh, once it finds those records, it can do index joins to the other tables, so fact table and stuff. And that guy takes almost eight and a half minutes. That same query with the accelerator, it's about the same time as the previous test. Uh, it takes a couple of seconds longer, um, but uh, it's still under a minute. Um, so I think this is a case here where, you know, using the accelerator, you can avoid having to create some costly indexes. Um, you know, sure, in, your, in, uh, in real life, maybe you do want to index the, the customer fields, uh, customer name fields, but in this test, we didn't do that. Okay, um, <clears throat> now in, this, uh, in the presentation here, uh, I have included all of the, uh, the test queries, so you can take a look. Here's old, old Tom Clancy here. Um, you can take a look at uh, the particular test we did, you'll see that um, because we're not benefiting from index, we're reading a lot of data. I did try and tune the, each of these queries to run as good as I can get them with with the engine itself. Yeah, so if I add a comment here, I really challenged Mike. I said, Mike, you've got to get Informix running as fast as possible. And uh, he did it, as you'll see, using directives and every trick of the trade uh, he knew uh, he got it running as fast as possible. Yeah, we, we didn't want to uh, come up with a test that that, uh, that kind of uh, hurt Informix. We want to show Informix in a good light and in an even better light with the accelerator. So we're not deliberately trying to show the, the accelerator good and then hobble the um, the engine here. But uh, so, but it really uh, the the accelerator really helps when we're reading lots of data, which is what we're doing in these queries. We are simulating a data mart with, a, well, heck, it's got a billion records in it in, the, in just the fact table there. So here's all the queries, and here's, here's, some, here's the timings, which we've already shown you. Um, and right now, I'm going to hand this uh, back to Lester, um, who's going to show you um, how you can uh, 
how the accelerator is seamless even when you're using uh, other tools. These tests were done with DB Access. That's going to show you uh, using a, a BI tool. So, whoops. I've got the uh, screen. Um, Let me share my it. desktop. And so, you uh, should be seeing my desktop. And, and just to uh, show you that the accelerator works with, with any kind of query tool, uh, one of my old favorites uh, was a query tool developed by a company called Brio, which became Hyperion, uh, which Oracle bought. And so I'm going to uh, fire that up, and uh, I'm going to say, let's create a new connection, um, and hit OK. And the connection is going to be an ODBC connection to Informix. Hit Next. And uh, put in my username, my password, and uh, I'm going to pick the uh, sales uh, database that Mike has been working with, and uh, then save this OCE. This is just a simple connection file, and uh, I'm just going to call it LK Demo. And uh, click it on the right, and it shows me a list of all the uh, tables. So let's grab the sales fact, and let's just do a real quick ad hoc query here. Uh, I'm going to take year, add it to the request line, which means I want to see all the years, and uh, I want to see the total amount paid. Uh, let's see a summary by year. So what this query is forcing it to do is scan the fact table, scan a billion rows, and uh, give me a summary of the total sales by year. Now, every different tool has a different way of working with the uh, accelerator. And um, what I'm going to do is in Hyperion, if you go to data model, uh, where you set environment variables is in an area called pre-process. Whoops. And I just need to copy the uh, command to set the environment. Put it here in the pre-process area. And all that does is, before you process the query, run this first. And this first tells it to run the accelerator. So I say OK now, and I hit process. And uh, it's gone off, and it's done the query. And while it's doing that, whoops, it did the query. So a little bit too fast, but let's take a look and just see how many rows. Uh, I forgot something. I was going to add a count here. So I'm going to add another uh, field. We're going to call it a count. And uh, I'm going to use the count function. Put an asterisk in here to count all the rows. Let's rerun it, and we'll see how many rows it had to scan uh, to come up with this number. And uh, so if I add a grand total down here for count two, I've got a billion uh, rows, two million, and plus some number of rows there. That's basically how you can you can use the accelerator uh, with any uh, query tool. I've used it with Pentaho, and uh, I'll talk about this a bit more at the end of the webcast of it uh, in April. We're going to do another webcast like this on using the warehouse accelerator with Pentaho. So, Mike, I'm going to show. I accidentally muted myself. Hang on just a minute, Mike. I've got to find you uh, in this list of people who have joined. And Mike, are you uh, on mute or? No, I'm here. Ah, there you are. 
Take it away, please. You got it. All righty. Okay, so in the in the test that we um, we ran with the the setup of the accelerator, um, our fact table, which is 56 gig, um, is compressed down to under 20 gig uh, within the accelerator. So that that all sits in memory nicely. Um, as I said, you see the best performance gains when you're you're scanning a table, and you really don't see huge gains uh, or you don't see much benefit really when you're just returning just a few records and uh, everything's indexed. Uh, some of the first tests I did um, were all indexed, but without using those those hash joins, I was doing many millions of index reads, and you know some tests I killed after like 25 hours and stuff. So um, that's that's why those hash joins are in there. Now we didn't make any changes to these queries between the the two two examples I showed you. Um, it's just that environment setting, to say whether to use the whether to offload the uh, query to the accelerator or not. And for everything I showed you, we we ran it in DB Access. So the the accelerator, I, I think it's important to understand how the accelerator fits in. Um, it is a separate product. It is installed separately from the engine. Um, it can be on the same machine or a different machine, uh, and um, once it's installed, it it uh, puts entries in the SQL host file and stuff of your your server, um, and then the server will offload queries to the accelerator if it you know if it if it can, um, and then it doesn't matter what you're querying it with you know whether you're querying um, your your database. You know, with DB access, third-party apps, whatever, um, that runs as normal. The accelerator just sits there, and the engine will offload it if it can. Um, so nothing else has to change. You just put it, put it in place, and uh, you know, set it up, and uh, you should be good to go. Um, now, the on DWA command, uh, I just cover this briefly. Uh, this is a command line um, command that uh, you can use to, um, you, you can use it to monitor what the accelerator is doing. You start and stop the accelerator. And if you make configuration change to the accelerator, you need to rebuild it. Um, and these are you know, various commands or various options, you, arguments you can pass to on DWA. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll show you those just quickly. Let's get up some windows. So on DWA status, just shows you, you know, whether it's up and everything's good. And uh, this this here shows you how we've we've configured it for this demonstration. Um, we have a single coordinator node, uh, and these nodes are, are programs that are running, um, just processes. Uh, and uh, the coordinator node, um, you have to have one of those, and it will then distribute um, a query amongst its worker nodes. And uh, we've set this up with three worker nodes. Um, you, the more worker nodes you have, or, or we tried it with one and three, and with three nodes we get we get good performance, better than using just the one node, one worker node, um, and uh, and that's it. Um, <clears throat> what else we can do? We can run the on DWA tasks, and this tells us what what is the accelerator doing right now? Is it processing anything? When I run that. You can see that it's not doing anything. You, you get some output here, and it just says the primary node. That's our coordinator node. Um, if I was to go and kick off another query, and I'm just going to choose, let's say, I'm going to run test two. It's my little script here. Okay, so now that a query has been offloaded to the accelerator. I run on DWA tasks, and we can see here that, uh, that these three nodes are processing a fact table and the memory they're using. I run it again, they're using a little bit more memory. And so I can just keep an eye on it. And now the query's finished up here. And now once again we're back down to just showing the coordinator node. So that's the on DWA command. Um well a couple of options I've shown you there. Um now uh let's go back to my presentation. So here's some screenshots of that same kind of thing. I like to cover the a little bit about the Smart Analytics Optimizer Studio. Now, this is the GUI. Um, now, 
this is it's pretty cool. It's very pretty. Um, and you can run it from the from a local computer or directly from the server. I'm running it locally on my my laptop. I'll show you in a minute, and it connects uh, to to the database. Now, the only thing you really need this for is for the initial setup of the accelerator. Um, you cannot set up the accelerator without the GUI. Um, and once you've got it up and running, it's really easy to create a, a data mart. And I'm hoping to go ahead and show you that. Um, here's the accelerator. Here's a screenshot of it. Um, let me bring up the real, real thing here. Um, so here it is running on my laptop here. And Mike, and if I uh, interrupt, just so that everybody knows, Mike's sitting uh, at our office in Denver, Colorado, accessing a server here in Annadale, Virginia. Uh, so you're running this on your laptop in Denver, right? That is correct. Accessing the server here in Annadale, Virginia. Yes. Cool. So um, the ex there's kind of three levels to the whole accelerator thing. You've got your accelerator that's running on your Unix server. Um, and uh, that's like the software, the coordinator nodes, the worker nodes, and everything we were looking at. And within the, the studio here, you can set up, or you have to set up an accelerator for your database connection. And here I've got my sales database. And uh, underneath accelerators, I've set up sales ACL, the name I gave it, sales accelerator. Um, and it, to create that, you just right click, add accelerator, and then you have to add in uh, some pairing information. It's, it's, it's way of connecting to, to the accelerator that's been set up. I'm not going to do that because I already have this guy set up right here. So that's the that is the only thing you need you genuinely need the uh, the studio for. Um, but I'll go ahead and show you a little bit more. I want to go ahead and create a data mark. Oh, so as I was saying, we've got the three levels. You've got your accelerator at the highest level, lowest level if you like, which is uh, the process is running on Unix. You've got your accelerator set up here for your database connection. But that yet, as yet, does not have any information on the uh, the database. We haven't told it what tables we want to accelerate, what columns, you know, what it looks like. Um, now, is the we have set up a data mart, which is where all that information is stored. I just show you this. So this is that. This is the same schema set up within Studio within a, a data mart. And we can see here is our, our fact table, our books table, customers table. So this is a model, if you like, of the actual database. And only tables that are included in this, this model or this data mart uh, will be accelerated. Only columns that you've chosen will be accelerated. And anything that's grayed out here, for example, like middle name and address and city, the customers table, these guys, if you query on these, the query will not be accelerated. It will be processed by the engine, but will not be, it will not be passed over the accelerator because these columns are not stored in memory now. Okay, so there's our, our data mart that, that I set up and used for these tests. And I want to go ahead and quickly create a data mart just to show you how simple it is. Um, so I'm going to go go up here to our, our data mart. I say new data mart. And I'm going to give it a little name, demo mart. Next, choose which database I want it connected to. And I'm going to stick with my sales database. And some of these things do take a little while. And I don't know if that's partly because I'm connecting remotely, and I think the WebEx doesn't doesn't help here. Okay, and you can see down here, it gives a little status of what it's doing. Okay, it's uh, showing me now the, the tables I want to include. Now, I just want to keep this pretty simple here. I'm just going to include, um, I've got a couple of tables here. These mini tables, um, 
Let me just select these, finish. Okay, those mini tables are just cut down versions of our big tables, and I use those if I want to do a test load, for example. You know, I, I don't want to load a billion records into the into the accelerator every time. And now, you see, even though I've created a data mart and it's listed here, I'm not seeing any pictures. I'm, I'm chose those two tables, but I've got to draw them first. So I'm going to select both of those tables, and it's going to go ahead and, and uh, draw a pretty picture. Um, the nice thing is if the tables have been set up in the database with referential integrity, it will use, uh, the tool will use those, uh, the foreign key to create the join between the tables. And there they are. And just, I can now move these around. I'll just do this, do this quickly. And I can stretch them out. So here's, here's a simple uh, data mark. Um, now, I'm not going to want to accelerate all of these columns. So I can pick and choose those columns that I want to accelerate. By default, all the columns are selected. I need to remove uh, the date time field. Date time fields cannot be included in the accelerator. Um, let's see, I'll take a few more out just for fun. Um, there's that table, that's the, the books mini table. I'm going to go to the sales fact table, uh, sales fact mini, remove that, that date time. Um, let's see, uh, I can remove promotion and stores, um, transaction ID. And one thing that's really nice is that this gives you an estimate of how much memory this is going to take once it's compressed and optimized. And so this table is going to take just under 8 meg. And it also tells you by column. So you can say, well, if I remove the product cost uh, column, I, I will save myself maybe uh, close to a meg. Um, so I'm just going to leave it, leave it at that. You see how grayed out the columns that aren't being accelerated. Now, what's important to understand, this is just a picture. This is not a, an accelerated data mark yet. In order to do that, I need to go to my uh, data mark. I'll run validate quickly, just checks it, checks it all out, looks good, and then I deploy it. Make my changes. I can choose my accelerator. I've only got the one set up right now. Optionally, I can choose to load it right now. But I'm just going to deploy it. And um, that will go ahead, create the data mark, and then any queries, well, uh, if I was then to go ahead and load it, um, and loading simply says, now go ahead and look at the data, read the tables, compress them, optimize them, and put them in memory. Once I've done that, any queries involving uh, these two tables, it will try and uh, accelerate them. You know, depending uh, that they only reference the columns that have been selected. They use the join that, that's included in the, in the model here and, and some other conditions. And right now, this guy is listed down here on new data mark. It says disabled, and it's disabled because it is load pending. No data has been loaded yet. So uh, as soon as I was to do that, which I can do from here, or from a Java command on the command line, um, I could go ahead and load this data and then uh, any queries involving these tables would get accelerated. Okay, so that, that's, a, that's a quick demonstration of how easy it is to set up a data mark uh, using the GUI here. Um, I, once again, I've got, um, I've got slides here that describe um, what the data mark is, um, how we use Studio, and then you can also use uh, uh, Java commands to, to do just what I've shown you here through Studio, we can um, create an XML definition of the data mart. We'll come on to that in a little bit. Uh, we can deploy it with a Java command, and we can load it. And here's the, this is all in the, in the uh, presentation here. OK, 
Okay, I just want to cover the Java commands because the, the GUI is nice and everything, but you know, if you want to script any of this, you're going to want to use some, some Java uh, um, to allow you to use the command line. So let's go over here, down to this window. Um, <clears throat> now, uh, the Java commands, I'm just going to run uh, one that I use quite a lot, which is list marts. So show me the data marts that have been set up for or the accelerator. I need to name the accelerator here. And here's the output. The output for all the Java commands for the accelerator are all in XML, uh, an XML format um, with, with these tags. And uh, they all follow a similar kind of format. They list the command. They show you the results of the command. And what you want to look for is this. The operation was completed successfully. And then if there's uh, output associated with it, that's listed in the next section. So the output of this command, you know, show me the data marts, shows me demo mart. That's the guy I just set up. And it's status, load pending, followed by our sales data mart. Um, and as we'd like to see, it's active. It's ready to go. And there's a, there's a few other Java commands. I, um, I have listed them here as, as examples to, for example, you want to take the data mart offline, you want to put it back online. Um, if you want to do a load, it's, sim it's very simple, Java load mart. Um, get mart info is interesting. That, that produces an XML definition of the, the data mart, which you can then go ahead and edit. For example, if you want to drop a column or add a new column. Um, uh, you can drop the data mart, and uh, you can create a data mart using an XML definition. For example, if you do make changes to it, you can go ahead, edit the um, edit the XML. You so you run get mart uh, info, you edit the XML, you drop the data mart, and then you recreate it um, with the updated definition. Or, or now, this is also a good way of taking a data mart from development to test environment and then from test to production without having to go through the GUI each time. That's absolutely right. Now, the um, uh, last thing I want to show you is uh, Smart Mart. Now, the thing I just showed you there where I create that demo mart, I used the GUI, I drew the picture, I deployed it to create a data mart. Now, you can do it the other way around. You, instead of, um, because that takes an understanding of the database, um, the, the joins, the tables involved, and stuff like that. Um, there's another way to do it. It's either called Smart Mart or Workload Analyzer, where you uh, capture SQL running on your system, queries that might be running, and then you analyze that, or you use the engine to analyze that and turn it into a data mart. And that data mart, uh, will only include those columns that you're selecting, those tables that you're using, and it will it will also try and identify what's the fact table or fact tables um, based on the queries. Um, and this is a great way of having a first stab at uh, creating a an accelerated data mark. Uh, um, I'm going to go ahead. Uh, well, let me show you. This is these are there's a bit more to it, but um, these are the basic steps. You capture your SQL first of all. You, you know you need some sample SQL. You turn on tracing. You run the SQL with tracing on, and then you use these two functions: probe to mart to analyze that probing data that you've just just created, and then the gen mart def function to turn that that definition to an XML format, which you can then go ahead and, and create data mart from and load. Now I'm going to uh, do this really quickly with uh, with some uh, with those same 12 queries that I ran at the beginning of this uh, presentation, um, I've got all these in uh, a workload file. No, I don't. Where is it? Here, sales workload. Here he is. So I'm setting the, the probe um, start. And I'm also, uh, I'll set explain on, but avoid execute. There's no need to, 
to wait for all these things to be to be processed. We just need to run them through and have the engine analyze them. So here's our 12 queries, 1 through 12, uh, down at the bottom here. And um, so I've scripted together all of the steps. So it's just I just have to kick off one one script here. And it uses that, that SQL file that we just looked at. It's gone through and created an XML file for us. Let's take a look at this guy. And here it is. This is the XML definition of the data mart. And um, I gave it this name, Sales Mart Auto. Uh, I did that in my script. And we see our tables listed. We've got authors, and there, here's the columns for the authors table that wants to accelerate, books table with a few columns, and so on. And this guy just shows, here's our definition. And right now, this is not a data mart. This is just a, uh, a definition, which we could go ahead and edit. Um, so in order to turn it into a data mart, um, I need to go ahead and uh, load it. So I'm going to use a Java command, create mart, list the accelerator name, and our XML file. Run that. The operation was completed successfully. I'm glad to hear that. And um, by list marts, I should see now I've got a sales mart auto, again in status load pending, because I didn't load it. Um, I'm going to go back here. Now I'm going to do a refresh of my accelerator. And you see down here the status. And we're just going to let that, that run for a second. Um, by the way, I haven't shown you any loading of the data marts because that, that does take some time. For example, our um, billion record uh, sales fact table and its other tables there, um, those take about 40 minutes to load. Which is not, not awful, but uh, you know that's, that's why we can't really do it in, in this demonstration here. So now I've but created... To put that in perspective, Mike, what I think is really exciting, usually in most data marks I've built, uh, we load every night, and we take an hour or two after the load to build summary tables. The warehouse accelerator eliminates the need for those summary tables. And, you know, you can take 40 minutes and build uh, and load data into the warehouse accelerator after your regular nightly loads. So it ends up saving you time. Okay, now um, what I've done here, when I refresh the accelerator, I saw our new data mart appear, sales mart auto, um, and I selected open. Um, because right now we don't see a pretty picture of it. Yes, it's, it's a data mart. If, once it's loaded, it will start accelerating stuff, but we don't see the graphical representation of it. So what we did before, we created it as a project in our little demo mart here created a project, and we deployed it, in which case it became a data mart list under the accelerator. This way, we go in the opposite direction. We've created our data mart. Um, we created it, we, we created it uh, from the XML definition, so it's listed here. Now we're going back the other way. Say, hey, show me the, the little picture. And that this should complete very soon. And let me just uh, get that out of the way. Here's the data mart that it has just created, or here's the picture of the data mart we just created using Smart Mart. As you see, it doesn't take any understanding of the tables or um, the business logic, uh, and this is a great way to take that first stab of creating a data mart definition within your accelerator. The only columns that have been included here are um, those ones that were included in the queries. So, for example, we don't have the zip code in the customers uh, table. Back in uh, the one that I created, we've got it right there. So, but because it wasn't used in any of the queries, it's not included in the accelerator. And uh, that concludes uh, my part of the, the demonstration. Lester, would you like to hand control back to you?
I am going to take control back. Just give me a minute here. And uh, let me share my desktop, my screensaver on my other monitor kicked in. So just a couple of quick slides. Um, there's an exciting future uh, with the Informix Warehouse uh, Accelerator and what Informix is doing with uh, data warehousing. Um, and I'll be glad to talk more about that anytime. Uh, I could spend hours uh, talking about it. Um, the warehouse accelerator basically eliminates a lot of work that you and I have had to do over the last uh, years in building data warehouses. Uh, basically, you give it a table, it loads the table into memory, it's optimized, it's compressed, and bingo, queries are very fast. Anytime you do a sequential scan, uh, it comes back extremely fast. And it runs on very inexpensive hardware. Like I said earlier, the machine we're running uh, this billion records demo on is only about fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000. And so, what I'd like to do is uh, thank you all for participating. We're going to turn to questions now. Uh, but before we get to questions, I do want to announce our next uh, webcast is going to be April 10th uh, at the same time. And we're going to show you how the Informix Warehouse Accelerator works with Pentaho, which is fast becoming my favorite open source business intelligence tool. Uh, if you want a open source way to query your Informix databases, this is a great uh, way to go. Now, what we're going to do for questions is everybody uh, in the top uh, of your screen, you should see something that says Viewing Lester's Desktop. And if you run your mouse over that, you'll see a chat icon that will allow you to send chat messages to uh, myself and Mike um, and everyone. So uh, if you have any questions, please type them in in the chat window. And uh, Art's on board. Art's actually been sitting here pinging me saying, you're taking too long. Uh, but uh, he's on board, and we're, uh, we're ready to answer your questions. And we will have about two minutes left uh, in our time, so uh, we'll take questions for the next two minutes. Anybody have any questions? Um, I don't hear. Uh... Oh, we're starting to go questions. First question is, will the presentation be available for download? And the answer is yes. Uh, and one of the things Mike very carefully did was he did screenshots of the things we demoed. And uh, if you check back tomorrow on our website, uh, we'll have the, the presentation up that you can uh, download. Second question, is this an extra cost? And the answer is yes. Now, the exciting news is, uh, Late last year, Informix announced a new version of the Accelerator, a growth edition, which is quite a bit cheaper. It has some memory limitations, but everything we did today could have been done in the growth edition of the Data Mart, and I'm really excited uh, with that. Another hey, question. Yes. Lester, yes. going to the, to the cost, um, one of the things you get for free along with the Accelerator um, is you get compression um, when you buy the Ultimate Edition with the Accelerator um, or add the Accelerator onto your Ultimate Edition. And the Accelerator is cheaper than compression alone. So you get that bonus for free. Um, <laughs> that's and that, a good and that's way of looking at it, Art. Thank and that you. should improve, improve all of your queries um, and make life a little easier for all of us. So that's something to keep in mind. 
Um, okay. Someone asked the question, uh, I'm from Brazil, and can you use the accelerator on OLTP databases? The answer is yes, you can. Uh, and, and the point Mike was trying to show you earlier is if you have something indexed, then Formix is going to be probably as fast as you can get it. It's when you have to do sequential scans, and sequential scans will kill the performance of an OLTP database. So, yes, you can use it. Um, and yeah, the big advantage is if you've got, if you have um, decision support style queries that you're running, you know, large reports once a month or, or quarterly now, um, and you have to run them at off hours to avoid um, killing the performance on your OLTP server, you could offload that work to the, to the accelerator and run them prime time without affecting the engine. And we're out of time. There's one last question, and that's uh, what services does Advanced Data Tools provide? And I'd like to just say we, we have been focused on Informix uh, consulting services for the last uh, 20 years. Uh, this is going to be our, our, in fact, February is our 20th birthday of the company. Um, and we're glad to help anyone interested in this set up an accelerator. Uh, I have a machine downstairs that we did this demo on specifically for doing proof of concepts. Uh, so if you have a serious uh, business uh, need and um, would like to do a proof of concept on the accelerator, please feel free to um, contact us and um, let us know how we can help. Uh, my email information is up here. Uh, and also, if you have any questions that I missed, I, I, I saw a bunch come in just now, and I think I've, we're a little bit too late uh, to handle them. Please email them to me, and I will be happy to get back to you on that. And uh, look forward to seeing you uh, in April at our, our webcast there. Thank you all very much for attending.